Hi everybody, I'm Mary Ann from the North Grove. And I'm Maria Garcia from the North Grove as well. And today we are making a spinach feta quiche. Mm. And it's going to be probably the easiest quiche you've ever made. Okay, so to make our spinach feta quiche, we're going to be using a little bit of cooking spray. We are going to use 10 eggs. We're going to use a full carton of um, cottage cheese. We're going to use one and a half cups of milk and a cup of um, finely chopped green onions. We're going to use um, dill weed, salt, pepper, and a full package of frozen spinach and the feta cheese. Mm. We're also going to use uh, melted butter and cracker crumbs to form the, the crust. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our sheet pan. And the sheet pan is a rather large pan. Um, and we've got parchment paper. I'm going to spray cooking oil on it. But if you didn't have a, a spray, you could just brush it with a pastry brush, some vegetable oil. Um, we'll do the same trick. And the second thing I'm going to do is um, thaw the frozen spinach. We're going to put it in the microwave for six minutes. And while that is um, thawing, Maria will prepare the crust. So for the first part of our quiche, we will do our crust. So for that thing, we will need uh, the crackers. We already measured four cups, which is about two sleeves of this package. And we will put it in a fun way, in a bag. So the children will have fun crushing them into in a safe and no messy way. So we make sure we close it really well. We take all the air. Right? Uh, we can use our fingers or hands, or we can use a ruler. And we're going like this to really crush all the crust. The thinner, the better. So when we mix it with the butter, the melted butter, they will attach really well. Only one way, then the upside down again. Mmm, I love the crispy, crunchy sound. It's really fun. Like a sensory I think children would really enjoy doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. And just using your finger and crunching is, is really satisfactory. So, look, we have fine little crackers. So now that we have our crackers crushed, we will need a bowl and we will mix it with our melted butter. Yes. Go. And again, you can use your hands. You can use a spoon. I like use my hands. Oh, I just want to put it in my mouth like that. <laughs> so now crackers are a little bit soft and a little bit yellow. And that's a great consistency, so we can place it in our pan and light. Thank you so much. This is part of this how to take everything. Don't forget to preheat your oven, three hundred seventy-five. So it's ready for the time you put in your crust. Right. And it probably won't cover the entire sheet. It can, but it's, that's pretty much uh, as, as much compact as you can and stretch. So there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we will pop it to the oven uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, make it a little bit crispy. So I've pulled out the spinach that has been in the microwave for approximately eight minutes. It really depends on your microwave how long it'll take. 
Um, but when you press on it, and I don't know if you can see this, but I've covered it with saran wrap and left just a little gap so the steam can es escape. Um, if you press on your spinach and you can't feel any icy solid parts, then it is ready to be drained. And normally I would do this over the sink with a strainer, but for today we're just going to do it over a bowl. And basically I just carefully pour the contents of the glass dish into the strainer. And then I'm going to use a spatula, and this is probably the best way to, to drain the liquid out, and just keep pressing on it. And it's amazing how much liquid is actually in spinach. Um, so you may have to press for a minute or two to get it all out. Yeah, you don't want too much water in your quiche, right? We don't want too much moisture in the quiche, yeah. So that's why we have to really be vigilant and get all the moisture out. And I just keep flipping it with the spatula. And you can see it's still coming out. <laughs> so do a little bit more. It's almost finished. If you don't feel like microwaving your spinach to thaw it, you can leave it um, in the fridge overnight um, or on the counter for an hour or so uh, and let it thaw like that. Okay, I think that is just about finished. And Maria is going to show us how to crumble the feta cheese. So for our filling of the quiche that we're building, uh, we need uh, one cup of crumble feta. So what means crumble? So we measure our uh, feta and you place it on a cutting board, on a flat surface, and when your fork or if you feel comfortable with your fingers, you can do it with your fingers. And you basically separate all the big chunks of uh, the feta. Of course, you have to drain it, so you, you don't use the, the water from the feta. It's just the dry part. And then you crumble in little pieces that will help to combine well with the other ingredients of our quiche. And if the children want to help, again, you can use your fingers and break it in pieces. Just like that. It's a very soft uh, cheese. Now you have your one cup of crumble feta cheese. So now we're ready to make the filling of the quiche. I have cracked open 10 eggs and I'm going to whisk them until they're all broken up. And that looks pretty good already. And then we're going to add our cottage cheese. I'm going to just put the whole container in. And we are also going to use a half a cup of milk. This is one and a half cups, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. It doesn't really matter if you pour a little too much or a little too little. And then we're going to add our salt and pepper. Now, salt and pepper, of course, is kind of subjective thing. If you don't like a lot of pepper, use less. And the same goes for the salt. The recipe does call for one tablespoon of dill weed. Put that in. And then we're going to mix it a little bit more. All right, that looks really good. Okay, and now we're going to add the rest of our milk and our green onions. Try to get every last one. Um, we're going to add our spinach. 
And that's where a wooden spoon is handy because you want to break it up. It kind of clumps after you, you thaw it. And last but not least, we're adding our feta. And all of that gets stirred up. And there it goes. So this is a very, very simple recipe. Um, the next thing we're going to do is pour it into our prepared crust. The crust baked for approximately eight minutes in our oven, but it might take you a little less or a little longer, depending on your oven. Um, and we're going to just carefully pour it in. So the crust is out of the oven. We've left the oven on at 375, and the crust is beautifully golden around the edges. It didn't quite reach to the corners of the pan, but that's okay. Um, we're going to just tip the bowl, and I'm going to start at this end, actually. And I'm just going to let it pour on top of the crust very, very gently, because you don't want to really break up that crust too much. And then we'll go this way. We'll try to get to the corners. And it will spread as it cooks, so don't worry if you haven't got to all the areas. And uh, we're just going to get this end and down here. And we'll use the spatula so we get every last little bit of feta and spinach and green onions. And if you see any lumps, just spread it out with your, your spatula. There. go. And we're going to put this in the oven and it should bake for approximately 35 to 40 minutes. And once we take it out, we're going to let it cool for five minutes before we even go near it to, to cut it. <laughs> as hungry as you are. Um, yeah, so let's do that. So our spinach and feta quiche is finished. Um, we tested it with a knife in the by inserting it in the center and it came up clean so that way we know that the eggs are cooked. Um, if you can see, the filling of the quiche has pushed the cracker crumbs around to make a nice little crust around um, and it's spread out uh, quite, uh, quite nicely. Um, a couple of things about this quiche, you want to let it cool for at least five minutes before you try to cut it into pieces. And uh, depending how, how big your serving sizes are, you can get probably 16 pieces from this quiche. Um, it uh, keeps in the fridge quite nicely. And the next day, if you want to toast some bread and put a slice in between that you've warmed up, it makes kind of like a Western um, sandwich. Um, and another thing we wanted to mention was um, sheet pans are wonderful things, but you really need to take care of it. So um, we recommend always lining it either with parchment paper or foil to keep it its uh, best. And uh, we hope you enjoy this recipe. Thank you for cooking with us. See you next time. Next time. <laughs>